So I have a student who's asking about the importance of ECGs for steps one and two. Uh, what does he need to know? Should he be looking at any ECG resources? I will give you two points of value regarding ECGs for this clip, okay? So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Hit the like button. Hit the bell if you want notifications. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let me address the student's question here about ECGs. And I said I would give two points of value. The first is, what do you need to know for ECGs? Now, we could do a 45-minute ECG tutorial, okay, where we talk about every little detail about ECGs. Holy shit. But the point is to get your scores up on the USMLE. This is not some random school of medicine assessment where you're going to go through every little thing for ECGs. It's not what the, it's not what you need to know. You need to be able be able to identify atrial fibrillation, okay? Uh, absent P waves with irregularly irregular rhythm. Atrial fibrillation probably the most important. You also need to know STEMIs, okay? So myocardial infarction, where you're going to see ST elevations in three contiguous leads. For example, an inferior MI, where you see 2-3 AVF, ST elevations, and then the answer on the USMLE could be right coronary artery, okay, or, post, or posterior descending artery for inferior infarct. So understanding an ECG, whether it's like a left lateral or an anterior infarct, and what vessel supplies that part of the heart. You also need to know diffuse ST segment elevations, pericarditis, all right, and you need to know the types of heart block first, uh, second degree, and third degree, okay? The two different types of MOBITs. Um, I would say the combination of atrial fibrillation. Oh, and also SVT versus VT, all right? So SVT being narrow complex, VT being wide complex. And on 2CK, uh, ectopic ventricular beats or premature ventricular complexes will be wide complex. Now, once again, I said I wasn't going to make this a 45 minute clip about ECGs and, every, and all the, these minutia type details, but the combination of atrial fibrillation, STEMI, pericarditis, the types of heart block, SVT versus VT, premature ventricular complexes, will get you greater than 90% of your ECG questions on USMLE, okay? Students will say, what about like Delta wave, Wolf, Par Wolf Parkinson White, or like, you know, tented T waves with hyperkalemia? As I said, we could talk about you know, 50 different things that could potentially show up on ECG strips. But uh, the USMLE just wants you to know a few high yield things well. Now, the second point of value is that it's a waste of your fucking time to be reviewing ECGs with any type of external resource. In other words, I just told you to look at some ECG stuff. So you say, what do you mean? I shouldn't be reviewing? No, no, no. Understand what certain high yield ECGs look like. Google them, okay? Nothing crazy or complicated. What I do not want you doing is going through some 100, 120 page PDF that's reviewing all of your ECG material as though that's going to get you more points in the USMLE. It's not a good use of your time, okay? I really think it's sufficient to just Google high yield ECGs and then you could look at the first aid chapter. They have a few of the ECGs written in there. Okay, that's pretty much all you have to do for ECGs. That'll get you greater than 90% of your questions. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.